Philippine obstacle course star Kevin Pasqua sets the world Asian and Southeast Asian records in the men's 100 meters by 10 event in the 2019 Southeast Asian Games Wednesday, December 4. Pasqua races his way to record-breaking performances with 29.92 seconds, dominating the event and closing the country's Golden Hall. Philippines Kyle Antolin, Kaizen de la Serna, Monolito Divina, and Dean Moncada also gets the gold for the mixed team obstacle course. Filipino swimmer James DeFarini also sets a SEA Games record with 1 minute and 1.46 seconds in the men's 100 meter breaststroke event. This is the Philippines' first gold in swimming in 10 years. As of 7 30 p.m. Wednesday, December 4, the Philippine Hall consists of 56 golds. 41 silvers, and 22 bronzes. The host country Philippines still tops the medal rally with 119 in total. Watch out for Rappler's Daily Wrap on the 2019 Southeast Asian Games. Shares of media giant ABS-CBN fall by 2.6% Wednesday, December 4. This comes a day after President Rodrigo Duterte again lashed out at the network and threatened not to renew its franchise. Man, nationwide man. You go ABS-CBN. In your franchise will end next year. If you are expecting uh, Mourinho, I'm sorry. You're out. I will see to it that you're out. This is his third time to make the threat. Shares of the Lopez Led TV network closed at 16.96 pesos, lower by 0.46 points from its previous end price of 17.72 pesos on Tuesday, a six month low since June 2019. ABS-CBN's stock price has been on a downward trend since Duterte rose to the presidency in 2016. ABS-CBN's current franchise was approved through a bill and is set to expire on March 30, 2020. If the bill renewing the franchise does not get signed into law, ABS-CBN will have to close down its radio and television operations. House Speaker Alan Peter Cayetano, a Duterte ally, says Wednesday, December 4, lawmakers have more than enough time to tackle the measure in January and February 2020. Phil Stock's head of research, Jun Kalaikai, says the franchise issue became more political than anything else. But the network will likely survive even without the franchise because of its TV on-demand applications and other sources of revenue. In April 2017, Duterte accused the network of swindling him for not airing his paid political advertisements during the 2016 presidential campaign. <music> President Rodrigo Duterte orders the Justice Department and the Office of the Solicitor General to craft new water concession agreements more favorable to the public compared to the current deals with Manila Water and Maynilad Water Services. He also orders the filing of criminal, civil, and administrative charges against all those involved in the concession agreements. The government initially partnered with these private companies because it lacked the resources and funds for water treatment and distribution. Water services improved throughout Metro Manila in the late 90s under the helm of President Miguel B. Ramos. Duterte says Manila Water and Maynilad abused their arrangement with government and treated it as a money-making venture. President Rodrigo Duterte names Lieutenant General Gilbert Gapay the next Philippine Army Chief. Gapay, as the chief of the military Southern Luzon Command, is on top of anti-insurgency operations in Bicol, Mimaropa, and Calabarazon. During his time as SOLCOM commander, key communist leaders were neutralized and the armed capability of the New People's Army was significantly reduced. SOLCOM's operations also led to a spike in NPA surrenderies in the three regions. Gapay was a top-notcher of the Sinagtala class of 1986 in the Philippine Military Academy. His classmates include former police chiefs Ronald De La Rosa, Oscar Albayalde, and PNP officer in charge Archie Gamboa. His appointment becomes effective December 6, the retirement date of current Army Chief Lieutenant General Makairog Alberto. A university student in California files a class action lawsuit against video app TikTok accusing the app of harvesting large amounts of user data and storing it in China. The video platform was launched by Chinese company ByteDance in September 2017. In early November, the New York Times reported the U.S. government opened a national security investigation into TikTok, looking into whether the app was sending data to China. In response, the video app company emphasizes its respect of U.S. users and regulators. It also distanced itself from Chinese authorities, saying its servers are located outside the country and its data is therefore not subject to Chinese law. 